Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, so we are continuing talking about um, oscillation as a kind of movement. Now the previous lecture was um, about uh, oscillation of the pendulum, which is basically just going like this. Uh, this lecture is about the spring, which which uh, is stretching and then contracting again. Slightly different way of, of movement, but again it's kind of an oscillation and there are obviously uh, proper uh, equations which uh, the movement should satisfy and we are going to um, uh, come up with these equations right now. Now this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens uh, presented on unizor.com website. I suggest you to watch this lecture from this website. Um, there is a prerequisite uh, for the entire course of physics. It's the course of mathematics on this uh, uh, website. It's called Math for Teens. Uh, and the website contains some other courses like US Law for Teens, for instance, etc. Now the site is completely free and there are no advertisements. So I do recommend you to watch it from the site because every course has certain logical sequence of educational material presented. It's not just you just found one particular topic which you are interested in somewhere on YouTube uh, where all these lectures are actually stored um, and, and just watch this lecture. All the lectures are interrelated. It's the course, basically. Now, the Mass for Teen is a completed course. Physics for Teen is being done as we speak. Right now we are in the mechanics and we are talking about springs uh, and spring oscillation. All right, now back to business. Let's consider we have the following situation. Here is our spring. And this is the spring in its neutral position. Neutral means that it can stretch a little or it can contract a little. And this is the neutral level. Then we have a little weight here, obviously a point object, uh, which has certain mass, m. Now, what happens with the spring if we just uh, hang this object? Well, it will stretch a little bit, right, under the weight of this object. And we are talking about the weight, so there is something like a g, which is a free fall um, acceleration. So the weight is m times g. This is the weight. m times g. All right. Now, everything is not moving. It just stretched a little bit and that's it. Now, what happens if I will take this particular um, object and pull it down a little bit um, and let it go? Well, obviously it will start oscillating, up and down, up and down. And if we are talking about ideal spring, which doesn't have internal um, friction and uh, air resistance we ignore, etc., etc., it will just continue oscillating indefinitely. So this is kind of an ideal situation and we would like to um, uh, come up with the law of the motion in this particular case. All right, so. First of all, we are dealing with the spring and we have to know how spring actually reacts when you are stretching or, um, uh, or, or contracting it. Well, there is so-called Hooke's law and the Hooke's law tells that if there is a spring at certain neutral position, um, then the force this spring um, exerts if you are stretching it uh, is proportional to the uh, distance you're stretching. So if you have a spring like this and you are stretching it like this, now if this is the neutral um, uh, state of the spring and this is a stretched one, so the difference between these two, this difference, is the difference I'm stretching from the neutral position and the force which spring in this case it resists the stretching it's trying to um, con uh, contract again so this force is equal to minus k 
x where x is um, the distance I'm stretching. k is some kind of a constant. It's the elasticity of this uh, particular spring. Obviously, different springs have different elasticity. So in this particular case, I assume that k is given. So we know what kind of a spring this is and what its coefficient of elasticity. Now, I have to warn you, however, that this is a very, very approximate law, this Hooke's law. It works more or less precise if these stretching are really small. I mean, if you are stretching the spring significantly more than, than its original length in a neutral position, then the Hooke's law will not be uh, as precise. So, under certain circumstances, within certain um, relatively small uh, degree of stretching, this is working. And we are assuming that that's exactly the case right now, because that's the only thing which we know about this spring. If it's a more um, uh, significant stretching, etc., we don't have any laws to, to, to govern um, derivation of our equations, right? So, we are assuming that this is the case, and the Hooke's law is, uh, is working. Now, another thing which should be given, so we have mass, we have acceleration of the free falling, we have the um, elasticity of the spring, and then I will probably uh, have to say what exactly is the amount of stretching. So, if this is the neutral position, and I have stretched it, let's say, to, to, to this level, so this is initial stretching of this um, object on the distance L from the neutral position of the spring without, um, without any load. All right? So L is also given, that's initial stretching. And then I let it go. Now, obviously, what we have to do right now is position of this particular object at time T would be a function of the time. So x is the, the the distance from the neutral position to current position of the object. And that's the function which we have to determine. All right? Now, first of all, I told you that we have stretched initially at moment t is equal to zero to the length L from the uh, neutral position. That means that we have an initial condition, this. Then I told you that we just released this particular object without pushing it in any direction, which means that my first derivative, my speed, is equal to zero. Now we will come up with some differential equation for x of t. These are initial conditions, and we will apply these conditions to some uh, constants which will be part of the general solution of the differential equation, and we'll see what happens. All right? All right, now, so let's think about what kind of forces are acting at any moment t um, on the object of mass m if it's on the distance x of t from the neutral position? Well, there are two forces. One force is the weight, and it's always the same, m times g. And another force is uh, into the opposite direction, f, which is equal to minus k x of t. Why? Because x of t is the um, stretching of the uh, of the spring this is position where we are stretching this uh, stretching the spring minus because it's directed to the opposite direction relative to the weight so we are assuming this down is a positive direction of the x-axis right that's what x is and the k is a known coefficient of elasticity elasticity of this uh, spring now, the combination of these two forces is basically the resultant force which gives our object 
certain acceleration, right? So if W minus F or F minus W, it all depends on their, um, on their relative position, that would be, um, well, actually I should say plus because the minus is already here. That should be the um, resultant force and it should be equal to M uh, acceleration and acceleration uh, is a second derivative of uh, x of t. So f of, uh, x uh, of t is the distance, the first derivative is speed, and the second derivative is acceleration. All right, so basically this is a differential equation which we, which we have. Now let's put whatever we know about this. So um, w, the weight, is mg. Now the, um, uh, the force of uh, the spring, the elasticity, is minus k x of t and it's equal to m x second derivative of t. This is differential equation and um, it's a linear differential equation. In uh, the mass 14's I touch these and I explain how to solve these relatively simple differential equations. So right now I'll just write down um, the solution to this particular differential equation um, uh, and, uh, and then we will talk about what exactly are the constants it depends upon. Now the solution to, uh, to this is something related to trigonometry. If you remember, the derivative of a sine is a cosine, the derivative of a cosine is minus sine, so that's how we are relating to second derivative and, and, the, uh, and the original function. Now this is a little complication, but everything is taken care of. Now my general solution to this particular uh, differential equation is the following. It's one constant times cosine of t com times square root of k over m plus another constant sine of t times square root of k over m and then I need a free member plus mg divided by k. This is the general solution to this equation. All right, now um, what we can do right now is we can differentiate this once and twice, compare with this, and it will satisfy this particular equation. So just out of curiosity, let's do it relatively quickly. The uh, first derivative is mm, minus C1 from the cosine is a sine, and then there is a internal function sine of t square root of k over m. Now plus c2 again square root of k over m. The derivative from a sine is a cosine t times square root of k over m. Now this is the constant so the first derivative is zero and my second derivative is minus retains. Now this square root and this square root will be k over m cosine of t square root of k over m and this would be also minus c2 uh, no not a square root anymore because it's a square root times square root so it's plain k over sine of t square root of k over m. Now, what happens if, um, let me make this a little bit simpler, I'll divide it by m. And see what happens now. So, the second derivative is this one. Now, uh, if I multiply it by um, k 
over m if I multiply this xt by minus k over m I will have this minus k over m cosine which is this one and then minus uh, uh, from the it will be k over m sine which will be this one so if I will multiply my x of t this one by this k over m this will go to this this will go to this and what happens with this guy if I will multiply it by k over m I will have only g left g left so this is exactly this multiplied by uh, by k over m by minus k over m uh, plus g right okay so this is a solution so we have the expression but it's depending on two different it depends on two different free constants how can I get these constants by initial conditions so this is the initial position we stretch it by L so if I will put 0 into this function now uh, this would be 0 this would be 0 so cosine of 0 is 1 so I will have C1 plus mg over k equals L so C1 is equal to L minus mg divided by k we've got that now now from this I have to take the first derivative now the first derivative this will give me sine of something with some coefficient so in zero it will be zero this will be cosine uh, so it will be c, ti uh, c2 times uh, square root time cosine of zero which is zero um, this will not be participating in the first derivative because it's a constant and the first derivative is also zero so I will have c2 times something is equal to is equal to zero so c2 will, will be equal to zero so here is my final formula x of t equals uh, l minus mg divided by k cosine of t times square root of k over m plus uh, mg divided by k so that's the formula and um, it gives basically the behavior of the position of the uh, of the object at time t as a function of time t all right so um, what can I say about this first of all it's um, the oscillations are um, trigonometric uh, function so which, it, which means it's really going up and down up and down to to infinity that's one thing one observation now another observation is what happens if L is equal to mg divided by k if L is equal to mg divided by k what does it mean actually well it means that L k equals to mg now let's think about what is L times k L is my initial stretch of the spring relative to the neutral position times k gives me the force with which spring tries to pull back mg is the weight so it looks like on my spring I have stretched the spring exactly to the position which is um, producing the uh, the force directed up exactly equal to the force directed down so the, f the force of the spring is completely balanced 
this the, the force of the of the gravitation the weight and obviously this thing will not move at all so if it's already stretched a little bit by this particular length l which is equal to mg divided by k from the neutral position then this is a, a, an equilibrium point so my object will not move up and down only if i will stretch it a little bit from this equilibrium point then it will start moving up and down so otherwise if l is equal to this expression this gives you zero and we will have a constant position of my um, object it will not move at all now if l is less than mg divided by k that means that i didn't really stretch it i really pulled it a little bit up so it will start from the upper point and then it will go down up down up etc so that's all kind of simple thing <coughs> so basically that's it so we have derived this equation now um i would like you to recall the previous lecture where we were talking about pendulum now in case of pendulum if you remember we had uh, a differential equation which cannot be solved in simple algebraic formulas and we had to really consider that the angle which we are tilting this uh, pendulum is really small in which case the sign of something can be replaced with that something just because the sign of an angle and angle itself in radians are very close to each other whenever the angle is very small sign of the angle and angle are, are very close if the angle is small so we made this particular simplification and then we were able to come up with um, another um, equation also depending on trigonometric um, function so-called harmonic movement harmonic means it basically behaves like like sine or cosine and here also now does it mean that um, in this particular case we really didn't need any simplification we did need that simplification in case uh, of the um, pendulum and in this case we really didn't resort to it well not so fast the universe is <laughs> infinitely complicated let's put it this way we have simplified already by using the hooke's law i was telling you that the force of the spring is proportional to um to to, to its stretching uh, or contracting only in case these stretching or contracting are very very small so that's where we have made this simplification and unfortunately it's also there and the, the real life obviously is much more complex etc and as in many other cases physicists decided to simplify their lives and instead of a very mm, I, I don't know really very difficult kind of research they decided okay we will make some nice formula which we will just base our uh, calculations upon etc etc but you have to know the the margin where you can move within these calculations so the formula for uh, Hooke's law or the formula for any of these equations or the pendulum equations well they are okay within certain boundaries as soon as you are out of these boundaries don't rely on these formulas anymore so for instance the formula for the uh, period of uh, pendulum which i gave in the pre previous lecture in this case um, we also can say what's the period of this uh, particular um, uh, spring related oscillation well uh, simple it's 2 pi divided by uh, by divided by this coefficient right or, uh, or i will multiply by its reciprocity so this is my um, period of oscillation in this particular case so it's mass the greater the mass is the slower will be the oscillations the stronger the, the spring is which means this coefficient is greater then the faster it will um, oscillate so that's what this period actually means so the stronger the spring the faster it uh, oscillates and the bigger the mass which we are hooking to this end the slower it will be okay that's it
uh, I do suggest you to go to unisor.com to this course and uh, read the textual part of this lecture. This and any, any other lecture has textual parts. And then there are exams for every topic. For instance, for this topic of pendulum, well, this is the pendulum and the spring, actually. I combine them together. There will be exam as well, and I do suggest you to take it just for your own satisfaction. Challenge yourself. Um, that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>